Welcome, everyone. I'm back. Yes, happy bastard new year to you all. And I hope it's all started very well. Now, I'm actually a little bit sick today. So there is the potential that I might start going to the past or even I might even go into the future because I do see things in front of my eyes. But we'll see how we go. And hopefully I can still guide you through this tale. Just in case you are not sure what you've clicked on and what you're listening to, I would like to officially welcome you to the Cheese and Crime Party, the true crime podcast where we dive into some of the most bizarre cases out there. And this week, we're bringing you the story of Elisa Lam, a young woman who vanished from the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles in 2013. But before we get into that, let's start with a quick round of bizarre crime news. This is from globalnews.ca. A fight over how much mayonnaise is too much has ended in the death of a subway worker in Atlanta, police have confirmed. According to WBRZ, in Atlanta, a customer shot two subway workers after a complaint about his sandwich on Sunday evening. Officers with the Atlanta Police Department responded to a Circle K gas station just after 6.30pm after receiving a call that a person had been shot. They found that two female employees inside the neighbouring subway had been shot. One of the employees, 26, died at the scene, while the other, 24, was rushed to hospital. Believe it or not, it was about too much mayonnaise on his sandwich. Willie Glenn, the owner of the store, told Fox 5. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. He decided to escalate the situation, and from there... That's when all hell broke loose. Interim Police Chief Darren Sheerbaum told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution the 24-year-old woman was shot in front of a five-year-old child who was in the store visiting at the time. What you are seeing behind me is the result of a tragedy, Sheerbaum told reporters from outside the subway. A senseless tragedy that we've seen numerous times throughout the year when an argument leads to gunfire and now we have someone dead. Well, I think that's a little bit extreme, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I'm judging the guy on many counts because there's no such thing as too much mayonnaise. Okay, now let's get into the main event, the case of Elisa Lam. Elisa was a 21-year-old student at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. In January 2013, she embarked on a solo trip to California, where she planned to visit friends and tourist attractions. She arrived at the Cecil Hotel in LA on January 26 and checked into room 220. The hotel, which was built in 1927, has a long and storied history. It has been home to a number of notorious guests over the years, including serial killers Richard Ramirez, a.k.a. the Night Stalker, an all-round mad bastard, and Jack Untervega, also mad bastard, who killed sex workers. The hotel was also the last known location of the Black Dahlia, a.k.a. Elizabeth Short, before she was brutally murdered in 1947. See episode 3 for more on that one. Do it. Not, not now, though. In a bit. Exactly a bit after this one. Good human. Stay. On the evening of January 31st, Elisa's friends and family became concerned when they couldn't reach her. They contacted the hotel and asked them to check on her. The hotel staff found her room empty and her belongings untouched. Elisa was officially reported missing on February 1st. The Los Angeles Police Department launched an investigation into Elisa's disappearance and released security footage of her last known movements. The footage, which was captured by the hotel's elevator cameras, shows Elisa appearing to be in distress and gesturing wildly as she interacts with someone or something off camera. The footage quickly went viral and sparked a number of theories and speculation about what might have happened to Elisa. 
One interesting detail, which will become more apparent later on, is that Elisa's mobile or cell phone was missing from her room. It's unclear if it was taken by her or if it was left behind. Either way, it made it difficult for investigators to track her movements or communicate with her. The hotel's water supply was also a point of interest in the case. A few weeks before Elisa's disappearance, the hotel had experienced issues with its water supply, including low water pressure and strange tastes and odours. Some people speculated that Elisa may have ingested something from the water which could have led to her behaviour in the security footage. Despite an extensive search and numerous leads, Elisa was not found. Then on February 19th, a guest at the hotel reported a strange taste in the water coming from the tap in their room. Hotel staff investigated and found Elisa's naked body inside the water tank on the roof of the building. Meaning that hotel guests were not only bathing, but drinking the water her body had been decomposing in. The cause of death was determined to be accidental drowning and there was no evidence of foul play. However, the circumstances surrounding Elisa's death and the location of her body have led to many theories and speculation. Some people believe that she was suffering from a mental illness and may have climbed into the water tank in a state of psychosis. Others think that she was murdered and her body was placed in the water tank to cover up the crime. The LAPD conducted a thorough investigation, but they were unable to find any evidence to support these theories. The case remains open, but it has been classified as an accidental drowning. Despite the official ruling, the case of Elisa Lam continues to fascinate people and has spawned a number of theories and conspiracy theories. Some people believe that she was the victim of a serial killer, while others think that she was killed by the hotel itself, which they believe is haunted by the ghosts of past guests. One of the more out there theories was that she was playing something called the elevator game. This creepy ritual involves visiting several floors in an elevator. The player starts on the fourth floor, then goes down to the second, up to the sixth, down to the second again, up to the tenth, and finally down to the fifth. They are not supposed to get out on any of these floors. According to the legend, a mysterious woman will get into the elevator on the fifth floor, but the player must not look at or interact with her. They must then press the button for the first floor. If the elevator goes down, the player must leave the building and not look back. If it goes up to the 10th floor, it is believed that the player will enter a new dimension. Some people believe that Elisa's strange behaviour in the elevator, including pressing multiple buttons as she entered, suggests that she was participating in this game. Another very odd fact in all of this, and going back to her cell phone, is that she continued to post to Instagram after her body was discovered, months afterwards. Which, to me, sounds like someone fucking about and teasing friends and family. But some theorise she may have scheduled them. But, I don't know, personally, that seems a bit odd. So, the Lulu McClue take on this, my personal take, and my money, is firmly on a hotel worker murdering her or maybe manslaughtering her they were like messing around with her and something went wrong because they would know where all of the the cameras are in in the place in the hotel so they would easily be able to not be seen and no one was seen when she was seemingly talking to someone also there was an alarmed door um to get onto the the roof where the water tank is. So they would also have access to keys or codes or whatever they'd need to to be able to get out there. The other thing is, how the fuck did she manage to get up onto that water tank and move a very heavy lid, as far as I, I, I'm aware, and then take all her clothes off, jump in, put the lid back on? It just seems a bit 
fucking weird that she could do that on her own. And I know she had, um, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and apparently she hadn't been taking her meds. They didn't find any other evidence of drugs or alcohol. Um, but some people have been saying, well, it's probably, you know, she was having a mental break. Bipolar don't do that. No, I don't think it can do that. I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure. Another weird little uh, tidbit, if you want. Is it tidbit or titbit? It, anyway, is that apparently where the hotel is, was, I think it's actually been renamed now. It's not the Cecil anymore. I think they tried to rebrand, but it's still in a shithole, I think. Um, there was, at the time, I think, a outbreak of tuberculosis. I think uh, that was amongst a lot of the homeless um, people. And they were doing tuberculosis uh, testing. And a weird little coincidence. I know some people like have some theories about this, but I don't know. It probably just is a coincidence. That the testing kit had a, was the, named LAM, spelt in exactly the same way. Elisa. So that's a little bit spooky, but I don't know. And it could just be bullshit. It could just be internets, couldn't it? With the lack of concrete answers, the case of Elisa Lamb remains one of the most mysterious and intriguing true crime stories out there. And if you have any information about the case or any theories of your own, I'd love to hear from you. You can find me on social media at the links below this episode, wherever you're listening. Smash the ever-loving shite out of those buttons. We both will get something out of that. So thank you for listening to Cheese and Crime Party. Join me next time as we delve into another bizarre true crime case. Love you, bye. Bye.